Well, it's time for a new modification to the Grizzly. Uh, the maximum spindle machine speed here is uh, almost 2100 mi uh, RPM. Yeah, miles per hour. Great. Um, great for doing milling and what have you, but really lax when it comes to doing any kind of engraving and bands. That's what my my pretty much my life has turned into just playing with this is either making parts for it or or making uh, uh, medallions and stuff so I went ahead and I bought a uh, high-speed spindle motor a mount the control unit for it uh, And I've got the other two things I'm going to need to put it on there. That's bailing wire and duct tape. My plan is I'm just going to duct tape it to the spindle and then wrap it good with bailing wire so it'll stay on and, and make it a pretty good project. Well, maybe not. So we'll get rid of these two things. So what we're doing right now is we're in the process of coming up with a strategy, a plan, and then building the aluminum parts to, we're going to mount, let me get that up where you can see, we're going to mount uh, off of the quill and the spindle. So what I'm going to do, being on this machine, I have so much travel on the x-axis and I've got the clearance to do it, this spindle is going to mount right up under here. Um, it will go up and down as the spindle goes up and down, so that will give me my z-axis motion. I'll be able to maintain the machine center on the table reasonably well because on any of these machines your y-axis is your real limiting travel on it but what I'm gonna do is I'll take this R8 adapter out and then I will put an R8 colette in there and I will make a stub shaft that the aluminum bracket that's gonna mount out sideways from that um, it will fit up in there and then the bracket will also be bored relieved to go up over the quill body Well, part number one is reasonably ready to go. I got to get the stud for it yet. Uh, so this is the plan. It's got a stud. I got to trim that off on the bottom. But the stud comes up. The R8 Colette goes there. And then it'll just go right up into the milling machine so well that worked better than I thought it was going to uh, the the actual spindle the outer diameter of the spindle pulled into that socket so um, as far as flexure goes side to side it's as solid as the spindle then the next piece will be the arm that goes out so uh, that's where we'll start next.
Well, here's the next piece. This is what the, the motor will actually mount to. Well, we're coming along. Uh, <laughs> this is <laughs> a little overkill. I had 5 16 stainless flatheads, Allen flatheads, and uh, I was going to go buy more bolts, and I went, what the hell? And the fact is, is there's only, on the clamp side, there's only two holes. Uh, normally what you see is a third hole in the middle and it's threaded and what I believe that is it's a mechanical stop so when you tighten the two bolts that hold the base to the whatever you're clamping it to that's a mechanical stop so you don't uh, over squeeze the motor so I tap those clear through but I think I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a 1224 Allen in between those two bolt holes that's going to be more than enough Right now it's running it up onto the outside diameter of the spindle and that's its, its uh, alignment point. Right now this puts absolutely no, there's no load on the bearings now. The e-stop is off. Uh, to run in this mode I will not need power to the machine because I guarantee you I don't want to do something stupid and accidentally reach up and okay the z-axis is at the top of its stroke right now so it's ready to take for a test run. This is a kind of a test pattern engraving. It's going to you just engrave a series of peck marks, then it'll engrave a circle, then it's going to engrave uh, a hexagon with drill point set up in it. It's just to see what it does. Oh, so here goes. anything. Quite healthy in that. It's just going down 0 0.025. Come on, focus you there. I've already decided that this high-speed spindle is not staying on this machine. 
uh, when I get done running this little test. I'm going to take that little combination machine, Chinese uh, mill drill lathe, and about the only thing I'm going to keep on it is the bed and uh, the Y-axis table. I'll build a new Z. Well, it's fun day today. Uh, holding that on it is actually staying right where I put it. So this this is going to be fun. Uh, and it sucks it down so flat that I'm uh, not having any ripples in the metal. Once this is cleaned up and buffed, the detail will be a lot crisper. The top gear in the top hat is, uh, when I lean right over and look at it, it's got pretty good detail on it. A lot of the uh, characters that it's engraving are very, very small, but it's just doing a, a wonderful job. I'm just tickled with that vacuum clamp. Um, the O-ring still in the center under that rubber gasket, and it, uh, it gives the center support, but doesn't pull it down in the cavity. Tells me it's uh, doing the cutout cycle now. It's going to run along. It's about ready. And I did the cutout with the tab. I did one without using tabs, and I was using an eight. is out on the machine the e-stop is pushed anyway uh, to change it over to the high-speed spindle I have to go ahead and take out my uh, chuck I have to get my uh, 9 sixteenths R8 collette, just a regular collette, and my arbor. Put the arbor in. I run the nut up, I use the, the nut for a just to stop, I know I've got enough of it in the collet to use my back. These collets are long-winded. Okay, I have to try to get a little bit of snug on that. Now I draw the up in. Gotta get it pretty tight. Okay. I loosen the nut. Take it off. Now the only thing I'm skipping here is after I normally get this mounted I have I go over and uh, plug it in. It's on a quick connect. So now I just start the sure I do there we go. Run the nut on the bottom. Then I just position the top of the motor to where it clears the spring return housing and uh, the quill lock lever. And then, I mean, I don't have to bead on this thing. It pulls right up into place. Okay, that's 
there, that's there. Large Allen wrench. That's it. He is ready to rock and roll. Runs pretty quiet. I don't think I can get around to there. I need to. So I just Do what I need to do, just throw a piece of metal on the vacuum clamp and, and uh, I just did the engraving with it. I uh, was really surprised. That was a great addition to the system. So anyway, it comes off faster. So that's my little secondary spindle. Did a beautiful job of engraving on a steampunk scully. So, uh, now I'm going to do a system to where I look to see what they were using on an engraver to hold stock and they use a sticky, two-sided sticky thing. I what it was, 10 4-inch by 6-inch sheets for $159. So when I bought that, I bought some uh, sticky, two-sided Gorilla tape. I'm going to try that next. So anyway, this was a fun project.